Welcome to Motlow State Community College in the Honors Program, and today we'll be studying and starting this journey in theater. Um, you could have taken music, you could have taken art, and you chose theater. So welcome. Thank you so much um, for choosing Motlow. There I am, Professor Seal. I am, am in Swanee there, at the foot of Swanee Mountain. Uh, I was raised in Cowan, so I am Middle Tennessee, born and raised. Um, that's my son in the middle. He's a kindergartner this year. Elliot, you'll hear me talk about him a lot. And that's my husband. He also works at Motlow in the marketing department. So I have a Master of Fine Arts, and that's a terminal degree in theater, theater performance specifically, but I've done um, professional work as an actor, as a costumer, and as a director. So I've got many sort of jack of, well, chill of all trades, if you will, in the theater. So, so um, usually in this class, a big part of what we're trying to do is to critique live theater. That's what we really want you to be able to do by the time you graduate from this course. We want you to um, be an educated audience member, to understand all the things about theater, all the jobs of theater, the history of theater. Uh, we want you to be able to walk away from this class understanding the principles of design. We want you to be able to understand and think critically about how art reflects the culture. Um, you know, it's part of you becoming a broader liberal arts scholar. So um, we're not really sure what jobs will be available in the future, but studying the arts has always been part of a liberal arts curriculum um, because it expands your mind, it introduces you to new and beautiful things. And as an arts advocate, I think it enriches your lives to see live theater, to watch different kinds of theater productions. Um, my entire goal for the course is sort of cut off at the knees during this COVID crisis because the theaters for the most part are closed. And that's um, heartbreaking for me. I have so many friends in the industry right now who are um, on unemployment, really struggling. Um, of course, I'm very active in the community theater here in Tullahoma. And it's very sad for me to see, you know, plays get canceled, plays only seating at half capacity. Um, you know, I, it is a hard time to be a theater teacher, but uh, we are resilient. We will figure this out together. Um, sort of the plan right now for if things keep going the way they're going is for you to log in and watch a Broadway HD play. Now, those are Broadway performances that have been taped. So you get to hear the audience's reaction. You get a 10-minute intermission, just like you would if you had paid the price of admission. So this time last year, we were going to see Dear Evan Hansen at TPAC as a theater honors class. We drove up there, ate lunch in Nashville, went to go see a matinee, and had that communal experience, came back, got to talk about it all semester. That's what we would be doing if it were not a pandemic of global proportions. So um, now I have a picture of Into the Woods there for two reasons. One is because if you're going to write these critiques, you can't do just like a movie musical like Into the Woods, where there's no audience reactions. But the other reason I put Into the Woods here is just to say something optimistic, um, as I am prone to do, which is that the theater has survived pandemics before. William Shakespeare wrote some of his best sonnets during the Black Plague, which killed like one in three people. Um, hugely devastating. Uh, Into the Woods was written by Stephen Sondheim, who is a gay man, during the AIDS crisis, when half of the people that he knew um, were gay people living in New York City who died. So the first half of Into the Woods has this sort of fairy tale ending. You think people are going to live happily ever after. Then we come back from um, intermission, and half of the characters we were introduced to at the beginning of the play have died. And so this sole second act is, you know, what do we do during a pandemic? How do we survive with this heavy, heavy grief on our hearts? So um, 
I believe the theater will survive. I believe that um, there will be new Netflix shows this time next year and that we will all um, hopefully uh, be better for it for this time of um, things being different. If you've ever been to Times Square, you know this picture on the right is just eerie. If you've ever watched the ball drop on New Year's, that drops on Times Square. It's usually teeming with people, um, people from out of town, people from other countries. And to see that tourist um, destination completely empty is just um, something unique to this pandemic time. I say that things in New York City are getting better and better as I'm recording this. Um, they are coming through it. So uh, we are hopeful that Broadway shows will reopen uh, in the spring. But it's looking more like summer. <laughs> all right. So um, I'm sure you're getting this pep talk from probably all of your professors. Um, but it's worth mentioning that the beginning of the semester is a really important time. Uh, it's kind of a scary time. I'm not a good flyer. I never have been good on airplanes. I get motion sick, in case you're wondering how much of a nerd I am. Yeah, I get like nauseous and uh, nervous, and I'm just a total spaz on airplanes. But the worst part of me, for me, is liftoff, right? Uh, the whole airplane is shaking. Uh, I love to travel. I love most things about travel. But liftoff is always a really hard and shaky time for me. I have to breathe deeply. If it's an afternoon flight, I have to have a drink, right? Um, and I say that to say your beginning of the semester, especially this semester, may be a little shaky. Bear with. Know that we care about you. Know that we're here for you. Um, if, you know, your textbook isn't come in yet, please don't automatically default to dropping the class or withdrawing from the class, reach out to me. We can talk. It, it's a shaky and uncertain time, especially for those of you who are fresh out of high school and taking on college for the first time. It can be that sort of lift off, but I just like travel where on the other side of that, you could see the Eiffel Tower. On the other side of that, you could see the um, Wall of China. I truly believe that the beginning of the semester can be um, the most intimidating time. Now, final exam time can equally be, right, the descent out of the air can also be a pretty scary and shaky time. So please breathe. Remember that it's like this for everybody. Remember um, that you are resilient and you can handle it. Um, but be proactive at the beginning of the t semester. You know, if you're waking up in a cold sweat, go take another look at that calendar and make sure that you've got all your deadlines on uh, your personal device or your personal calendar. Make sure that you are keeping up with the reading. In my class, you can even work ahead if you want to. Um, just make sure that you start the semester um, with intentionality. And I think that, you know, if you can have that mindfulness that it is just a difficult time, and um, hopefully that'll help assuage your nerves. So theater is a fun class, I think. I hope. I enjoy theater, so it's fun for me. You might like physics. Physics may be what's fun for you, but theater is fun for me. Now, it can be sort of deceptive that just because it's fun means that there are, isn't any accountability. And that couldn't be further from the truth. I still expect you to have these weekly quizzes. I still um, will grade these papers with the same rigor as your English professor, right? Um, just because we're talking about frilly dresses and fun, lighthearted musicals doesn't mean that there's still not the academic and scholastic component. So please, please, please don't come to me at the end of the semester and say, I thought this was just a fun class. I thought this was just theater. I didn't I didn't think that I actually had to turn in my work and write scholastic papers. Um, it, that's, that's not going to cut it. I'm just warning you on the front end. Just because it's fun doesn't mean you don't have to apply yourself. So on the um, official textbook uh, bookstore website, it may have requested that you buy Piano Lesson. I am not going to require you to read Piano Lesson for this class. 
The textbook is the same, the Theater Lively Art. Now it's offering it in two different formats. One is digital and then the other one is loose leaf. It doesn't matter to me what kind of format you get the textbook as long as you have it. Um, the other thing that supply that I'm going to ask you is to subscribe to Disney Plus. So we'll watch Hamilton and we'll watch um, Sound of Music for sure. We may watch Newsies. Uh, we'll just see how the semester is progressing. But um, so your sort of supply list for this class is, of course, the textbook and a Disney Plus subscription where you can watch um, musicals as we talk throughout the class. So another thing I hear a lot from students is I'm just not creative. And that sort of breaks my heart because it's a huge part of your brain, creativity. It's a huge part of what I believe is a fulfilling life to create things, to make things, whether it be songwriting or making up a dance or, um, you know, drawing. All of those things to me are good for your soul. They're good for your um, uh that use of your imagination is good for anxiety. So when people come to me and they just say, um, you know, I, I can't write a poem, I'm not a creative, or I can't draw this or drawing, I'm not good at drawing. That defeatist attitude just really isn't going to fly because part of the reason that the liberal arts curriculum for thousands of years has included art, music, dance, theater, um, is because it is a part of your brain that needs to be stretched. Um, who knows what kind of job you're going to end up in, right? And what transferable skills, whether it be, um, you know, the principles of design, whether it be um, the principles of presentation that you're getting in your speech class, but also that we'll talk about in acting, um, whether, you know, these transferable skills are important to me. And one of the main reasons that I believe that this is a meaningful class. So please, 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 put forth the effort, know that, you know, there are limited graded, uh, you know, it's not a huge grade. If you completely bomb it, it's not going to send your GPA uh, through the basement. So please apply yourself, invest yourself into these opportunities because it's going to make your brain grow. And um, there's science behind that, but we'll move on. So what to expect from this class? There are 11 or 12 quizzes. Um, those are weekly quizzes, Thursday by 3 o'clock. I will have expected you to um, have read the chapter and done the work and be, you know, have submitted that quiz. You can work ahead. You don't have to get it all done. Um, you don't have to wait. Things are open. Everything for the whole semester is open at the beginning of the semester. So... Um, for every weekly quiz, there's a discussion question. Like I said, sometimes it'll be something less extensive, like who's your favorite actor? And then other weeks, it'll be write a poem. So just make sure you're staying on top of those discussions. Some are more involved. Now, some people ask me, why do you leave the discussion questions open all semester? And that's because if you are having a very meaningful discussion, um, say by the end of the semester, you've gotten to know someone, you care more about what they think, you can go back and read what they wrote, you know, in chapter two. You're reviewing the terms for the week, you know, you can go back and read what other people have written. So as with always with discussion questions, make sure that you read other people's responses before you write your own because you don't want to say something redundant. Or if you want to take what somebody else said and add to it, I really liked what Zach said. Um, I would like to add um, on to what he said and include this. So, for example, one of the first discussion questions are write a quote about art. You got to make sure and read those other discussion questions to make sure that they haven't already used the quote you wanted to use because you need to do something unique. So um, there's just a little extra incentive. Um, and they're short discussion questions, most of them. So um, I, I'm expecting to use good grammar. I'm expecting you to write scholastically. Um, and so complete sentences, uh, you know, that kind of thing. We want to practice professional writing as much as possible. So then for your midterm paper, 
you're going to write what's called the character analysis and there'll be an entire lecture over the character analysis. You can either pick the musical Hamilton, which is streaming on Disney Plus or Sound of Music, which is also streaming on Disney Plus. So you'll pick one character. You know, you might say, I'm really interested in Eliza Schuyler and you may write your critique uh, analyzing Eliza Schuyler, right? And so um, I'm giving you lots of choice here and I hope that you can find a character that you're interested in and that is intriguing to you. More on that later. So at the end of the semester, we have that production critique, which I talked about just a moment ago. It's cumulative. You're gonna talk about every concept you've learned in theater, from directing to acting, to costuming, to set design, um, to audience response. Uh, you know, you're gonna look at it through what you learn about theater history. So all of that is included in that production critique. So um, it's a really important paper. It's your final paper. So, and then you'll do a costume rendering and we're talking about design. So if you picked um, Eliza Schuyler, then you would draw a new costume for Eliza. And, um, you know, obviously influenced by what you saw in the film, but unique to your own design. And we'll talk about that more in the chapter on design. So um, those are kind of what to expect uh, as far as the coursework, course load to keep up with. So what's kind of the weekly week gonna look like? First you read the chapter or chapters, then you're gonna watch my lecture, which will be like this, a screen capture. And then I'll include videos, whether it be, you know, a clip of Oedipus, if we're talking about Oedipus, a clip of, um, uh, you know, the musical that we're talking about in the musical section, some, weeks you'll have more clips than others. Now I do write quiz questions over the clips to make sure you're keeping up with them because it's important in a visual art form for us to be um, in, you know, looking at lots of different types of theater. So those, um, if those video links are broken, please reach out to me and let me know as soon as possible because YouTube is very bad about pulling things offline. It's frustrating for me. Obviously, you'll write your discussion question. Those stay open all semester, but I suggest you write the discussion question while you're in the content and have mold over it. Um, you know, as you're thinking about costume design, for example, it's going to be easier for you to present, you know, in that discussion question while it's fresh on your brain. And then you have that paper at midterm, paper, paper at the final exam. Sometimes we have activities such as uh, the poem. Before you take that quiz, now the way that I do quizzes is you get one shot, 40 minutes, only 10 questions, but um, you are only allowed to take the quiz once. And I know sometimes your internet goes out in the middle of it, things like that are exceptions, but most of the time I'm not going to let you make up a quiz um, because for one thing, what happens is rampant cheating in the online environment, um, you know. I think I'm trusting you to be ethical and to really apply yourself in this content. I've given you plenty of time, but I'm only going to give you one attempt. Um, and I know other teachers give you multiple attempts. This is my, you know, my show. I'm going to run it my way. So please respect that and take that assessment or quiz. So I want to get to know you. I want us to have a rapport by the end of the semester. Um, and I know some of you will just be naturally more communicative than others, uh, but I want us to keep the discourse respectful. Uh, you know, when you sit down to write me an email, just take a moment to reread it and say, hey, is, does this sound respectful in tone? Could this be misunderstood? Um, because we're all human beings right now in living through a global pandemic. So I rarely ever have students be disrespectful to me in an in-person class, but I do see more often uh, students being disrespectful through a screen. And, you know, I've studied communication theater as well. I'm also licensed to teach communication. Um, and we call that firing uh, when you are more likely to be 
a troll online through a screen than you are in person, right? Um, that impulse to dehumanize through the screen. So I just want to warn you about that and say, um, please be respectful. Please use your best grammar. Please always rethink before you, you know, sit down and type something out and shoot it off. Uh, it's just not going to be um, respected if it's not respectful. So, you know, you may get to, you know, play like Hamilton and you're watching it and you're like, this isn't appropriate for me. I'm only 17. Uh, you know, then let's have a conversation about that uh, and weigh the pros and cons rather than just being rude. So I just want to challenge you to, um, you know, always put your best foot forward, be polite, be respectful, and um, respect will be brought back to you. So um, my email is always open and I am uh, can also advise you if you need me to in, in your content area. We can sit down and look at your uh, degree and what transfers and all of that if you need help with that as well. If you don't hear anything else here, I am here for you. Right, please, if you get sick with coronavirus, if someone in your household gets sick with coronavirus, reach out to me. I want to know that kind of stuff. I want to be here for you and, and help you navigate Motlow. Because especially if you're a first-time freshman, there's a lot that can be unclear and unsure. And um, I'm here to be your guide. I'm here um, through the shaky liftoff and landing. <laughs> um I'm here for you. So uh, anyway, I hope you enjoy Honors Introduction to Theater. I hope you enjoy uh, being at Motlow. I hope this is a great experience for you, and I will see you on the discussion boards. Thank you for listening.